Hey everybody, welcome to the When and Soul podcast. It is I, Danny Cho. What's up? And I'm the other guy. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby is here. You know, I think we've done it long enough that we don't even have to say our names. I don't think people care, you know. Yeah. If they really care, they'll just figure out who we are. <laughs> Yeah, so. the, who's the who's the guy with the low voice, and then who's the guy uh-huh. with the? He sounds kind of like a like a Mexican cholo. Right? I hope it doesn't sound like we're giving up at this point, or <laughs> I'm giving up. It's not. I just feel like you know, like let's let's spend our time on getting you some information about when you are in Seoul. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? Your your your. Yeah. Uh, you're, uh, your fake energy made me laugh right now. <laughs> Information. Uh. Well, let's, let's just jump straight into it today. How, yeah. how about we do that? Yeah. So today we are going to talk about the coffee and cafe culture in Korea. Which is huge. It's one of the biggest things you'll notice when you come here because every other storefront is a cafe. Yeah. Like literally, literally sometimes there are cafes uh, right across the street from each other. I would, there would I, there do I say right next door to each other? Yes, yes. Yes. No, you know, what's crazy is that like, you know, when I was, you know, when I was back home, uh, and I see like a Starbucks in one corner and a coffee bean on the other corner, I'm like, all right, that's, that's a lot. Right. Mm-hmm. But here that is way more prevalent, you know, um, mm-hmm. actually according to the Korean Economic Daily, the number of cafes in Korea was 18,316 at the end of 2016. Wow, you're dropping facts now. Yes. That's that's very official, Danny. Oh, you know, I mean, I do some research for this podcast, actually. <laughs> okay. uh, the total import volume of roasted and raw coffee beans in 2016 was 159,000. Thousand tons. Koreans drink a lot of coffee. Coffee. We'll just we'll just put it that way. Mm-hmm. And they spend more money on coffee in general because it's cheaper back right. home in the states. Like right. for instance, if you walk into a Starbucks here, uh, or, as opposed to in the states, you know, you, you know, the daily coffee is often the choice that I, I would go for. Mm-hmm. Just the today's brew, right? In the states, which was always like a dollar fifty. Mm-hmm. For a regular cup of coffee. You mm-hmm. just say, uh, can I get a drip coffee? Yeah. And they know what it was, yeah. right? But here, they don't have that. They, uh-huh. they, they do have owner the coffee. Uh-huh. Owner like, the coffee. Today's the coffee. coffee, yeah. But it takes a while sometimes. Mm. It's not the same. Mm-hmm. Plus, it's I think it's like three fifty or something. Four, I don't know. Often, you get a cup of coffee here, and you're paying three, four times more than what you're paying at a Starbucks in the States. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So be prepared if you're coming to visit. Coffee's a little more expensive here. Mm-hmm. I've been to places where it's been even up to $12 Whoa. Uh, for a gourmet cup of coffee. Like, they take it really seriously here. I know they do in the States. Mm-hmm. You can find a fancy place, barista, um, with um, qualified baristas and um, roasted beans that were... Delica- delicately taken care of. Like, you, you, wherever you go, they're going to have that. Right. But in Korea, they have it all as well. Yeah. Um, and the other part about it is that, like, to me, I noticed that cafes here are not just necessarily for the the drinking of the coffee. First of all, I yeah. don't drink coffee because it gets me all jittery. But um, they treat cafes like a place, like, it's like the pre-partying like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. before you go to dinner or whatever, uh-huh. you pre-party at, yeah. at the cafe. You, you know, you, especially, like, a lot, a lot of women I see, like, um, they just hang out, you know, talk uh-huh. what they're going to talk, the gossip, whatever, and then they go dinner. I noticed that, like, I, I used to work in uh, Karasugir, mm-hmm. in Shinzadong, mm-hmm. in Gangnam, mm-hmm. uh, and I used to go to cafes every day, mm-hmm. like, um, on the weekdays, mm-hmm. and literally, I would be, like, the only man... Mm-hmm. All afternoon at like a coffee smith, I'd be surrounded by women, mm-hmm. and um, I don't know. I don't want to generalize, but really, that's what it was. You're generalizing, yeah, and so so you're saying that if you want to potentially try to pick up a girl, I I never had the balls or the <laughs> or the guts <laughs> to actually pick up a girl. No, but 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 if, yeah. But whoever's listening, if you have the uh, testicular fortitude, <laughs> right to um, to just go up to random girls, go hang out in Karasugir at a cafe somewhere, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah, all right, that's awesome. Or, um, but I don't know, like uh, 
Given that there's so many cafes in Korea, mm-hmm. I think that the thing is, yeah, they, they like to mix it up. Like, mm-hmm. there's so many different, I mean, there's so many cafes that you got to have, like, theme cafes as mm-hmm. well here. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. just inevitable. Right. Right. So, there's often places you can go to that are more suitable for studying, let's say, if you're a student. m h m Uh, let's say if you want to bring your own cat or dog, mm-hmm. you can do. I mean, they have cat cafes, dog cafes. Mm-hmm. They have raccoon cafes. I've been to the raccoon mm-hmm. cafe. Uh, there's a few in Hongdae, mm-hmm. and I've been to one. Now the thing is, like back back home, uh, raccoons are considered like like varmints. Yeah, they're like is that Yosemite Sam? <laughs> like <laughs> varmints? <laughs> varmints? No, no, they're, they're vermin. Vermin. Right? Yes, yes. Farm it. Um, uh, so they're pests. They're pests. Yeah. But here, it's they're all, cute. Yeah, they're like pets and stuff like that, right? Right, yeah. Uh, but the thing is, at, at the Raccoon Cafe, mm-hmm. there was two uh, sides to the place. Mm-hmm. So there's one side where you can drink and, you know, your coffee yeah. or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then when you go into the raccoon area, yeah. you're not... You can't take any of your, your beverages because yeah. these raccoons, will, who knows what they'll do, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, And uh, it kind of it kind of weirded me out, man, because I was like, those are the ones that knock over trash cans, uh, you know, back <laughs> home. But now they're like crawling, you know, like not crawling, but they're walking all over your shoulder. Yeah, you know what I mean. And just I've been to one also similar to that. Mm-hmm. And the one thing that weirded me out was, you know, these these are wild animals. They mm-hmm. should be outdoors. I kind of felt bad for them. Mm-hmm. But I it kind of I, I had a change of heart because I saw the owner how loving. She was Mm -hmm. to the animals. Was she even, uh, there was a time when uh, she didn't let anyone play with them. She just said, they need to be alone now. Oh, really? Yeah. Or just gave them their their space and time. um, (laughs) They're in raccoon timeout. (laughs) (laughs) Right. (laughs) But, and and then also she doesn't let kids Mm. play with them. Like Mm. if they're too young, she's just like, it's just too dangerous perhaps or... Um, the kids uh, are a little too aggressive mm-hmm. with the animals. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I mean, she was really loving to them and it made me change, have a change of heart, right. um, at least for that. But lately I've been to some weird, other weird animal cafes. I mean, they have re- reptile cafes. Mm-hmm. They have, um, so you play with lizards? meerkat. Yeah. Meerkat. That's a, that's a very strange one. Mm-hmm. There's one with a fox in it. That made me really sad because okay. you can't play with a fox. Yeah. That thing will, like, it's dangerous. So what do you do? You just kind of, it's like you a petting zoo? It, it's on the balcony, oh. locked up on the balcony. No one can go out there. And oh. you just basically look out the window at it. It's so sad. Okay. Like, that kind of thing, I'm tempted to just, like, call, like, animal services. Or really? Something. It's like, come on, man. Or break really? in and free, free the fox yourself? I mean, maybe the owner is very loving to the fox. Mm-hmm. I don't know, but yeah. I, I, have, I haven't seen it. Right. You know, uh, maybe it was like taken out, out of an extreme situation where its life was in danger. Right. Maybe. I don't know. Who yeah. knows? I don't know the story, but it just made me feel sad. Uh-huh. Um, you know, I've been to a cafe where they have uh, marsupials, like uh, wallabies, yeah. kangaroos, basically, yeah. small kangaroos. Yeah. Um, they have uh, sheep cafes. Yes. Or I've they been... have one in particular. I've, seen, I've been to yeah. the sheep cafe, yes. I-, I felt weird about that place, too, until I found out the owner owns a... Uh, what do you call it, a farm uh-huh. in the Shigor, in the countryside, and actually springs, uh, has a lot of sheep. And mm-hmm. it's not the same two sheep that are always at the cafe. He, okay. always, he, he uh, rotates them in and out. And he's very loving to them. It's kind of like, like a comedy club where the lineup's different every, every day, <laughs> <laughs> right? Where the sheep goes, all right. He names them. Uh-huh. I mean, the names are a little bit kind of annoying because I think last year he had a couple based on The popular movie Frozen, uh, uh. Elsa, and whatever the other annoying kid's name was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he named them after that, yeah. you know. And so it was definitely a, a marketing thing to get people excited about. Mm. Well, it's probably <laughs> better than naming it like Bat or you know, whatever, right? Um, there's, a, there's animal cafes, yeah. but then there's like also like other themed cafes. There's so many, like, it just is never-ending. We were walking by 
in Hongdae this uh, week, and we saw a, ca- a Nakshi cafe. Yes. Where you yeah. can go fishing. Right. Indoors. Right. It's like really weird, you know. I, I know they do the shrimping cafes and uh, a shrimp, shrimping. They're not cafes, but in uh, Taiwan, you mm-hmm. can actually go fishing for shrimp, mm-hmm. and then they cook your shrimp, mm-hmm. stuff like that. So that reminded me of that. But this is more catch and release, right? This is not like, hey, yeah. I'm going to drink an Americano, and then, oh, I caught <laughs> me a trout. Can you cook, go cook this up? Because the trout and Americano combo doesn't just, it doesn't go. You know what I mean? So you have to catch and release. It, that right? reminds me, though. Like, when you go to a lot of these uh, animal cafes... Mm-hmm. Uh, that the draw is for you to come and see these animals, mm-hmm. but also um, it's almost mandatory that you have to buy one drink per customer, right? Because um, after all, they are a business and they have to make money, right? right. And so, yeah, and the drink is often like not cheap. You right. know, it's at least five bucks. Mm-hmm. So just think of it as admission. And then some of them have covers, like a cover charge. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I've been to one uh-huh. where it was, well, it's not like a crazy cover charge, but I was like, oh, okay, so it costs extra to get in here. I mean, the biggest one I've ever been to, uh-huh. I mean, I guess you can call, it wasn't a cover charge, but it's a it's a dog place. Mm-hmm. I think it's called Bauhaus. Uh-huh. And it's just huge. It's like, a, um, they have like, I want to say like 15 to 20 dogs there wow and they uh they all live there Mm -hmm. and so um the the, you can buy snacks Mm -hmm. uh, and they let you know who not to uh, which dogs not to to give snacks to right um but i mean that's another way for them to make money Mm -hmm. you know to buy those snacks but how much how many snacks are those dogs eating (laughs) you know know. like that's another problem i feel like you know like you can't just continue to like feed those dogs snacks because it's making you money right you know i don't know i don't want to judge their business model but like part part i I have some you know qualms about some of these things right um well now uh uh, so since you're being an animal rights activist uh (laughs) let's uh let's 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 steer it a little bit like uh apparently there's like um like psychic like Psychic cafes. Oh yeah, right? the saju right? saju cafes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've been to it. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Very very um, uh, eye opening okay. in many ways. But it also, I, I mean, you'd think you go in there and you'd hear positive news. Mm-hmm. But I I came out of there just like really annoyed. Oh really? And really upset. What did what did the uh, they, they, they tell it you? It cost a lot of money too. Uh-huh. For me, it was like thirty bucks. Whoa! Um, and then it was like uh, the, the coffee wasn't even that good. <laughs> it was like I didn't even drink the coffee. You know, I had a translator with right. me. Like a friend just translated for me. Right. But I went in. and It was like stuff like uh, at the time I wasn't married or mm-hmm. I didn't have a girlfriend. Uh-huh. And she was like, oh, you're going to get someone pregnant in a, about a month and a half. And I was like, wait a minute, what? I don't <laughs> even have a girlfriend. I'm not, I don't want to uh, get someone pregnant out of wedlock. Mm-hmm. She said, no, no, it's a good thing. It's mm. a beautiful thing. Mm. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> and she's like, yeah, and you're going to marry her in, um, in December. It's that specific. Mm. And I was like, what are you talking about? And she's like, oh, but, you know, she's going to cheat on you eventually. Oh, nice. It's like... Uh wow, this is like um, news I would rather not know in advance. Right, you know? right. She said some good things like, "Oh, uh, she's gonna cheat on you, but um, it's gonna make you stronger as a couple. Like eventually, she's gonna come back to you." <laughs> okay, but that's be- only because you're gonna um, you're gonna retire off of a lot of money before you turn fifty, mm. and she's gonna come back to you probably because of the money. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, how romantic. It was like stuff like that. Yeah. And so I was like, well, you know, as long as in the end we love each other. <laughs> that's all that matters. <laughs> right? I would have been pissed off. Hey, man, yeah. and I'm going to be 50 in, well, I'm gonna be years, 50, 50 in nine years. So yeah, I'm yeah. going to be ha- run into money apparently. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't have a kid. Yeah. I didn't get married that year. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, you know, like it's uh, a lot of it didn't come true. And so. it cost you 30 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, actually I heard on the news that like, uh, is it possible for someone to s- sue a fortune teller if their fortunes didn't come well, true? Well, here's the thing, yeah. like there's, they're not technically fortunes, uh-huh. you know, there's, they're not psychics, uh-huh. you know, like the sajus really, they, what they do is, 
apparently what they do is they study um, uh, years and years of pattern. Okay. So basically, over thousands of years, they just have books on the year you were born, mm-hmm. the time you were born, mm-hmm. all that's connected. Okay. And so um, they believe that wherever the moon was or the sun was, right. like that has everything to do with um, what's possible. Mm-hmm. Uh, it doesn't mean it's going to come true for you, but everyone that was born in your moon phase or what whatnot in the mm-hmm. past, they mm-hmm. have books and... Uh, stuff written down so they can base stuff on that like this is what happened to someone in the past that had your similar situation and so they they say this is very likely but you can steer your life away from that okay so it's not so there's a good caveat for them to be like like this is a whole load of crap absolutely right, so right. i mean they're just giving you like a map of where your life could lead if you if you want it you can actually make yourself uh, go towards that direction because it, the the universe is laying that out before you. Yeah, this is my interpretation of what they said yeah, to me. Yeah, and so that makes it that makes it seem that you know this they're not like conjuring this stuff in their head or they're lying to yeah. you. It's just uh, a book on statistics, really. And then their uh-huh. biggest pitch is: if you like what you hear and you want to steer toward that mm-hmm. uh, destiny. Yeah. Then you should buy this cup of coffee. <laughs> right? Yeah. That's the, that's the yeah. business plan, really. <laughs> yeah, it's like, how much can I get them to pay for this crappy cup of coffee? That's their business model. <laughs> Thirty bucks, man. They must get together like at the end of the day. It's yeah. like, oh my gosh, this foreigner just paid me a hundred dollars <laughs> for sugar water and some dried <laughs> Folgers coffee. <laughs> like, it's like, Oh man, that's you know uh, one interesting theme cafe I went to, and I don't want to call it interesting, but I don't know any other word for it. Was the Hello Kitty Cafe that me and you went to? Hello Kitty Cafe, yeah, yes. Yeah. Uh, my sister, who is a Hello Kitty freak, mm-hmm. uh, uh, was like, "Oh, Opa, you need to go to the Hello Kitty Cafe." And I'm like, "You realize I'm a dude, right?" <laughs> and she's like, "No, it doesn't matter. It's it's a magical place." So. Uh, I remember a handful of years ago, me and you went, mm-hmm. and uh, it, it was very Hello Kitty'd out. Now we went to the, ri- I mean, there was an original spot, in a smaller spot. Now there's like a mansion size. They moved to a bigger like resort size. Yeah, <laughs> I think I went place. to the bigger place. Okay, and then I remember two floors. Yeah. I remember yeah. the, the funny thing was the seating area was on the second floor. Yeah, and I saw a bunch of couples sitting there. Yeah. And the funny thing was, all the dudes looked like they didn't want to be there. Right. You're right? <laughs> and all the girls did not care, and they were just taking pictures of their Kello Kitty coffee uh-huh. to, like, whatever the heck was, or, you know, around. And all the dudes just were, like, they were just, they, were, they looked like they were dead inside. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, so, you know, like, have you ever been to the Hello Kitty Cafe uh, because of someone like wanted to go there on a date, not on a date, no. Uh-huh. But everyone, a lot of people, when I bring it up, uh-huh. they want to go. Oh, really? Like when they're visiting, I took Daniel Day Kim there. <laughs> so it was just <laughs> you and Dan- so you and yeah. Daniel Day Kim went to me and Daniel went there, and we took a bunch <laughs> of selfies, and we ordered the most pink, like looking drink drinks and yeah. stuff like that. We yeah. got a Hello Kitty pink cake, nice <laughs> stuff like that, nice. Um, and so uh, that, that's fun, you know, I mean, you, you can really put yourself in interesting situations. Like, um, they, they have, I mean, like all these cafe, this cafe culture, I think it, 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 it's an experience, you mm-hmm. know, they don't have this stuff in the States. They, 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 they do for Hello Kitty apparently, but they, and I think they they, they've tried to do like a dog cafe, but the only issue is the, um, uh, what do you call the it? Sanita- the sanitation, yeah. right? Yeah. The sanitary yeah. nature of it. Yeah. And so you can't have like a, a marsupial cafe. Yeah. yeah. You know, how are you really going to get the permits for that? Like in Korea, I guess it's, it's easier to do. It's a little lax. I'm yeah. assuming. I, I'm guessing that's what it is. Mm. And so... Um, yeah, I mean, mo- most of the ones I've been to, they, they're they still there. I mean, the Sheep Cafe is still there. Mm-hmm. You would think there's problem, there's like sanitary issues with that, but they seem to 
handle it well. Mm. You know, in the states, I feel like that would never fly. Yeah, I mean, I've been to the sheep cafe. It's not that bad, yeah. but uh, oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, I had goodness. to. I had to do that. Did it hurt? Did it hurt? <laughs> um, I don't drink uh, coffee because it gets me all wired up. Mm-hmm. But what I do drink are like teas, you know, and mm-hmm. there's you know other things like juices. But there's some like more, I guess, Korean. Like cafe drinks, yeah, yeah. like like yuja cha, which is oh, right. uh, which is a citron, citron right, right, uh, right, and and it's it's almost like it's not a it's not a orange or a lemon, but it's in that citrusy realm of yeah. They uh, they use like the the grind or the, the rinds, rinds yeah. of the fruits of the citrus fruit, yeah, right. And it's supposed to apparently be good for like you know if you have a cold or whatever. I don't know. Uh, yeah. no, no. But, but the same with senggang tea, right? It's senggang, yeah, it's a uh, it's, uh, ginseng. Ginseng right, and right. honey when it's mixed with like honey. It's, yeah. It's good. Yeah, I so like it. so I would go into that realm if I'm feeling a little bit more like, you know what? Enough of this um, mm-hmm. tea bag, um, green tea stuff. Um, you know you what I mean? You get green tea a lot, I, I <coughs> notice. Like nok, the nokcha. Yeah, apparently, yeah. Uh, it, it's... It's better than just getting water for me because I don't want to go to a cafe and just be like, yo, yeah. I'm going to be here for five hours. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Fill it up for water, right? Right. Yeah. So I would get a drink, but then I can't get all jittery because I hate the way that makes me feel, the, yeah. the coffee. So then I would go, you know, the, the green tea, I wished, like I've had like, like, you know, like where it's steeped, mm-hmm. you know, like that kind of green tea. Like good. Yeah. You, yeah. You have to take it out actually after 60 seconds or something. Yeah. Have you been to... Um, the green tea, the Cheju Green Tea Company, or oh, what's it called? Uh, Osorok? No, I've never been. They have those around. The first time I ever saw that was in Insadong. Uh huh. And they give you like samples out front, and it's just really well made green yeah. tea. I, they have one in Hongdae. You should yeah. try it out. Yeah. I really like it. Uh-huh. And then everything is green tea flavor. They have green tea cakes, green mm. tea, whatever. Do they um, have green tea Kit Kats? <laughs> uh, probably. <laughs> um, uh, we, were, we were talking about Insadong. Insadong has mm. a lot of that like traditional cafe joints. You know what I mean? Like yumu yeah. cha, like you know, well, um, sangwa cha, and all that stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so you can actually also rent like hanboks. Yeah, and wear those for the day. Right. And ha- go to like a tea house and sit on the floor and drink your tea like in the olden days mm-hmm. and take your selfie and just get the hell out of there <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> i've actually r- rented a hanbok for a day once oh you did yeah well, uh, did you lose a bet <laughs> yes <laughs> i did okay. actually yeah. yeah so my friend was like hey you know it'd be funny as a like, what like you come here and then you just rent the hanbok and you walk mm-hmm. around inzadong and just be like a uber tourist that would be fun actually i yeah. would pay to see that yeah myself yeah so uh how'd it go did you like it was it comfortable yeah, man. I mean, yeah. the hanboks are comfortable. I mean, yeah. obviously, if you you know, like, if you work, if you're wearing jeans underneath it, then no. Yeah. But if you're gonna go like, this is all I'm wearing, then ooh, dude, it's like it's like you're wearing PJs, like silk silk PJs. Yeah, like sweats, but more breathable. Sweats. Yes. Yeah. So you're yeah. walking out, Lighter and then you, sweats. you're walking, and I got I, you know, cause I'm balding, but then you know, you you get the 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 hat, like the like <laughs> yeah. the head the headpiece. Yeah. It's like a it's like a it's a chosun bandana, right? <laughs> right. So you yeah. so you wear that, and then you know you go all around in Zadong. You're like, oh look at you know. There's a traditional. I'm gonna go get a s- stamp made, and then all these like tea houses. So I went to a tea house, mm-hmm. and then I pretended like I was in one of them historical period peace dramas. Yeah. You know, where people call each other telephone and stuff. Chana. <laughs> right, 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 right. So I was just sitting there, just uh-huh. like. Um. Right? I don't even know how to say it properly, right? Uh, but no, it was it was uh, it was interesting yeah. because my friends were just like, "You're such an idiot right now," you know. Um, you should have gone to Starbucks in that. Uh, in Sedong, Starbucks actually is renowned because in the Starbucks culture world, mm-hmm. because it's the only Starbucks in the world that doesn't have its writing in English. English yeah. Because Insadong has some kind of rule that mm-hmm. everything needs to be written in Korean. Yeah. So the Starbucks is actually written green in Korean. Yeah, Starbucks. Right. Yeah, like that. Yeah. I, apparently, that's the that's what happened there. That's kind of cool. Uh-huh. 
Yeah, I like that. You know what I mean? Like traditional. Like, like well, Korea goes. You know what? Starbucks. Yeah. No, not not in this area. Yeah, and, and Starbucks went for it. They went yeah. for it. Yeah. You know? Oh, cool. dude, it mu- good for them. Inside dong muscled Starbucks. I was like, nah, man. We're not gonna. We're not gonna put the English alphabet on on uh-huh. our thing. Do you want you want the spot or not? And Starbucks was like, all right, fine. You know, like, uh-huh. all right, write it in Korean. Like, they made it, they, you know what I mean? It was like right. a muscle move. It was a gangster <laughs> move on the part of in, in Sadong. You know what I mean? Um, By the way, like we were talking about Starbucks earlier. I mean, they have Starbucks Reserve now here, uh-huh. and uh, which is like a fancier. Like I saw that in the states. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I, I was like, what is that? You know, it's just basically more fancier beans and coffee. They only do drip coffees. They only do like Dutch, all that like high end coffee stuff. They have that in Korea now. Mm-hmm. It's available. It's also very expensive, but, um, Starbucks is already expensive yeah. for me. Yeah. The only times I go to, I, I go to Starbucks actually often only because people gift cards to me a lot. Uh-huh. I mean, in Korea, they're very generous. They, you, you always get gifts, and uh-huh. they're like always Starbucks cards, or uh, I often get cacao gifts uh-huh. that go straight to your phone and your cacao. So if you go to Starbucks and just show them your Q, QR co- the code mm-hmm. on your phone, then you can get a free coffee that way or something like that. So I have a lot that I have to use up all the time. Nice. So, so so you're like you're like you got you're rich at Starbucks rich right now. Yeah, I mean, that's the only time I feel comfortable buying coffee from Starbucks because I know how much cheaper it is back in the States. Yeah. So I typically make my coffee at home, Mm. to be honest, because, you know, I'll buy like a a bag for the week or a week and a half it lasts for me. And then so it turns out to be like a a ton on per coffee, but I'm getting really good beans. Like a dollar. Yeah. And then I I have a grinder at home and I drip coffee or AeroPress. Mm. And so I I kind of take it seriously. I do the, the drip really well, my own style, and I I make the most out of what I have. Yeah, I see um, it. I see it every time I come over. I'm like, mm-hmm. dude, mm-hmm. it's just coffee, bro. But again, I don't have the I don't have the uh, the love and knowledge of coffee. To me, it's just just bitter black water. Well, but sometimes I I have to leave the house, mm-hmm. you know, and mm-hmm. like I like going to cafes to work. Sometimes I often have to work mm-hmm. uh, at home or in a cafe, right? And so I'll I'll usually splurge and go to a cafe that I know they make a really good coffee, mm-hmm. and I don't mind spending the seven eight bucks on uh, the coffee they serve there because I know it's going to be good at least, right? And so I'll go uh, to a lot in Hongdae. Mm. Um, Korea, they have everywhere from you can get a chonung coffee from a pyeonijam from a convenience store. Mm-hmm. In the summer, I'll often do that where you get an ice cup mm-hmm. and they have these bags that you can grab uh, these like uh, bags full of Amer- cafe Americano or uh-huh. like a, a cafe latte and you just rip the bag open and you pour it into the ice. Uh-huh. And there you go. It's just a chonun. Oh. And it's not bad. Yeah. I actually like it, but mm-hmm. I don't. The one problem with that is I feel like I'm not getting the caffeine hit as mm, strong. Mm, mm, mm. So if I'm going to spurge a little, I want to go somewhere where I knew the caffeine, like I'm addicted to that caffeine, so I get that. Right. And I'll work uh, work an afternoon at a cafe. Uh, in Korea, there's some places that were baristas, they're really good at what they do. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they've gone back. I mean, they've actually done training and stuff like that. Um, there's one cafe in... Uh, there's a couple of cafes in in uh, in uh, Hongdae mm-hmm. for sure, and in Itaewon I know where the baristas are like they they do uh, competitions. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the uh, there's I didn't know they really had that. I I think I heard about it back in the states, like, like the world like, championships yeah. of baristas. You know, yeah, yeah. And I think Koreans are pretty uh, pretty good and. At doing that now as mm, well, mm. you know, but they take the roasting seriously now. They take like um, the care, and whenever I buy a bag of coffee from the places I go, they tell me the nuances and they tell me the best way to grind it, the num like the grind number and like how long to steep water really? stuff like that. They're very knowledgeable. Wow! It just tells me you know like they any- care. Yeah, yeah. And so I, I really appreciate that. Um, the cafe culture here goes from anywhere from cheap 
too expensive. Like the mixed coffee is cheap, right? Yeah. Like where it's just like literally you just put pour like this powder, like like sugary coffee yeah. concoction into hot water and it becomes mixed coffee, right? But then there are also like the ajamas that go around with the the um, old school way mm-hmm. where they have the carts mm-hmm. and they uh, they just go around town, mm-hmm. uh, the neighborhood with their carts and they sell like the old big one, like the 50 cent paper cup mm-hmm. with the powder coffee and then they'll serve it to like businesses, you know. And I've done that too because I like it. It makes me feel nostalgic in a way mm-hmm. where uh, I feel like that's what it used to be like. You and, know? and do you feel like you're helping out an old lady too a little a- bit? Absolutely. You know? yeah. And I think she deserves to continue, be able to continue her business. And mm-hmm. I think a lot of people give them that respect. Mm-hmm. And I love that. Mm-hmm. I feel like um, I don't know uh, completely the social security um, system here for the elderly. Yeah. Um, but I, I feel like it's, um, it's, it, it might be a little, I don't know. I, I feel like it's not as secure mm. here because I see more like, um, elderly on the, sh- on the street doing that st- kind of stuff and collecting, um, recyclable, recyclables and like, uh, the middle of the night. Stuff yeah, yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. It makes me really sad. But yeah. so you see like. So every now and then I'll see this lady in my neighborhood selling coffee uh-huh. uh, and I'll get it. I'll buy it. Yeah. You know, I'll enjoy it. I'll get a sweet cup of, you know, powdered coffee, mm-hmm. you know, uh, instant coffee. Right. And I feel like I'll, I like to help. I, I like to help her. Or I won't take the change back, you know. It's so sweet of you, Bobby. I'm like, you know, I'm a really nice guy. So it's the first time I heard that. Uh, <laughs> no, but you know, like I, given that I, I can't drink coffee when I see the, when I see the lady, you know, in the cart, I get something else. Like they have like random stuff, like old dang and stuff like that. So I'll go mm-hmm. get that. Like, you know, it's like a, it's like a, you know, you know, back uh, in LA, they'll have like uh, in, in, in crappy neighborhoods, they have like the ice cream truck yeah. or like, or like if you go to like a Mexican neighborhood, then they, they have the, the paletas the where, where you just, there's a dude in a cart. And they, uh, it's like frozen, like coconut, coconut, yeah. like whatever. And they go, bana, 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 paletas, right? But they also have like, uh, like candied mango. Yeah. They have, uh, like mango pops mm-hmm. with chi- like, uh, red chili yeah. on it. Oh, yeah. I love that yeah. stuff. So it's like the Korean version is these harmonies in their like kind of, uh, carts where they, where they have like random stuff, but it's never like ice cream. It's like. You know, it's like coffee, you know, it's like ojingo, you know, it's like cuttlefish and things of that nature, right? Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I, you know, when I see that lady, it, it reminds mm-hmm. me of the dude that sells corn in East LA, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? It reminds me also of, um, now that you bring up back in LA, mm-hmm. uh, when we first met, mm-hmm. we used to spend a lot of time at, um, a cafe, a cafe in K-Town. Mm-hmm. And we would work there all day. And yeah. you would get your nokcha. Yeah. And I would get my Americano. Oh, no, not Americano. Like, in, in the States, I never get Americano. Yeah. Like, I feel like I, I've only come here to only order Americano. Yeah. You know, and so um, I remember that. Yeah. We would use that cafe as our office, basically. And whenever we had meetings with people, mm-hmm. we'd just tell them to come to Cafe Mac, you yeah. know? And so the same goes for in Korea. Mm-hmm. We often meet up at cafes right. and we kind of work on the computer mm-hmm. uh, when we have to. We we do, um, yeah, if we both have separate work, mm-hmm. uh, we'll meet up at a cafe just because, you know, why not? You know, yeah. We treat it out as our office. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll pay for, it's, we're basically paying for our, our rent, s- rent yeah. Yeah, by, yeah. you know. If I'm there long enough, I'll be sure to buy more than one thing mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, and I'll get a cake or something. Um, and so uh, I'll do like coffee first mm-hmm. and then get a juice later. Yeah. Just so that I, I don't feel like I'm taking advantage of the place. <laughs> Although we are. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. I know? mean, well, I didn't do that at Cafe Max. I felt bad, but <laughs> that's why the owners changed and left. But um, <laughs> no, nah, you know what? And also cafes seem to be like the, not like it's like a, good place to work Mm -hmm. uh, or um, study or just like to chill. But there are certain cafes you're like, okay, this is clearly a date spot. 
Oh, yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Uh, there's an area where there was a cafe you told me. He was like, Danny, yeah. if you ever uh, get a girlfriend here, you should take yeah. her to this cafe. And I looked inside and it was just like, it wasn't even gaudy. It was just cute. Mm-hmm. It had like a, it had like, you know, those, um, uh, what do you call it? Those trailers inside? Yeah. Where, like a no, couple's it, trailer, you know, yeah, joint? The place was, um, they have a old VW van. Mm-hmm. Inside the cafe. Yeah. And apparently this place was the first cafe in Hongdae or in Seoul or in Korea Mm -hmm. where the barista was a professional barista. Mm. And so that's part of the history of the place. Right. And the coffees are just amazing. They make really good coffees. Mm. Uh, And it's... But the punagi there, like the the whole atmosphere there, Uh is very date-like. Very, very nice. Mm -hmm. I mean, they have a VW van in there yeah. you know which you can reserve the inside of that van mm-hmm. and sit on the floor in that van yeah with your date they have like a, a little stair sec- like a ladder you climb up mm-hmm. and you can sit at a small table on the top on the second yeah. kind of like a man-made second floor kind of thing <laughs> it's interesting it's like a man-made loft yeah 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 so i mean you know guys if you uh like coffee and uh, and if you're a coffee lover, I think Korea will be a great place for you because you'll get a dose of everything. You know, mm-hmm. um, you know, I would I would suggest uh, cafes uh, are probably the most popular business in Korea, aside from like, yeah, I think ca- cafes are probably the, I haven't seen anything more than cafes. Like, like in terms of the only other thing I've seen a lot of is like real estate agents like buildings but aside from that it's all cafes to me you know mm-hmm. by the way the name of that cafe mm-hmm. is called uh ho ho my or ho ho my or <laughs> yeah cafe and it's uh it's in home it's in sangsudong mm-hmm. it's, it's closer to sangsu yuk mm-hmm. sangsu station mm-hmm. uh check it out go look look it up online uh, perhaps just like a really nice place even to take photos yeah um uh, it's really well well yeah well received when people go there people like it i mean it 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 doesn't look fancy it just looks like like kind of cute nice cute nice yeah. almost hipsterish yeah you know yeah which isn't always bad yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh so yeah i mean they're not a sponsor or anything we're just saying yo check it out uh and especially if you if you're on a date, good spot to be like, oh, what is this place? It's so cute. <laughs> I don't know what the Korean version of that is. Oh, no, we Right? They, they call it ego. Eggyo. Eggyo. <laughs> ego is the food you eat. The, oh, yeah. the frozen waffles. Le- Lego my ego. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, you know, I think guys, if you're if you're in Korea, uh, you gotta check out a cafe. You know. Yeah. I mean. The cafe culture is worth uh, visiting here. Mm-hmm. Uh, exploring, I'm sorry. Yes. The yeah. Hello Kitty Cafe. Eh. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's it's worth it's worth it if uh, you're, you don't have it where you're coming from. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Worth the selfie. Uh, so, yeah, um, drink a cup of coffee and uh, come to Seoul. Yeah. And by the time you get here... Um, uh, there's probably get, there'll probably be a new kind of thing going on. There's always <laughs> it's always changing. Yeah, oh, people are always trying to one up each other. I mean, there's kangaroo cafes. <laughs> <out there. laughs> yeah, it's just like I bet you like there's gonna be like a VR cafe. You know, I, like, I'm just waiting for a polar bear cafe to uh, <laughs> come up. <laughs> Like once they have a polar bear or like a a camel cafe, yeah. <laughs> like I like the kid friendly cafes. Like I've seen one with a actual uh, merry go round. Yeah, in the middle of the cafe, Damn. it's crazy. Yeah. Like they have a swing swings in the, uh, that go around a merry go round. You can just stick your kid in there and go for a walk <laughs> and come back. And like <laughs> like uh, they have slides and stuff. These kid friendly ones are good too. Yeah. yeah, if you have kids, so. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, think about what else can you do, uh, you know, with cafes. Maybe that's that's your, your the listener's job. If you come up with an idea, you know, uh, if you have a crazy idea for a new style of cafe, please email us at peninsulapod at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. 
And, uh, yeah, I mean, the crazier the better. We're talking, like, virtual reality. Like, you brought up the Polar Bear uh, Cafe. Yeah. So, is all the coffee just iced coffee? Like, because, you know, if it's yeah. hot, then, you know, I don't think it's good for the Polar Bear, <laughs> right? So, so. Well, give us some ideas and we'll start the we'll start that um, that buzz. Yeah. And then they'll catch on. Someone will like the idea and they'll make the cafe, you know? And then, you know what? We'll name it after you. Yeah, we'll 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 push we'll we'll push for that. <laughs> <laughs> you have no like, yeah, 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 yeah. Sure, let's do that. We'll campaign for you. <laughs> so. Yeah. So uh, thanks for listening. And uh, oh, if you guys have any questions or comments about other topics you want us to cover or other experiences you want us to talk about, please email us at peninsulapod at gmail.com. So